What's up guys, I'm Ethan Carter and welcome to my channel. I love wet forming leather, both for how it looks and for its functionality. So today I'm going to show you three easy ways to wet form leather and then we'll make a holster out of one of them. Let's get to it. Before we get into the wet forming process, we first need to prep the leather. We start by cutting a piece of leather much larger than whatever we're wet forming. For this video, we're going to be wet forming a maker knife, which is essentially the fanciest utility knife ever. Next, we're going to soak the leather. For veg tan leather, I just used room temperature water, but for chrome tan leather, I found that soaking it in hot tap water helps it take the form better. I soak the leather for 15 minutes or so until it gets this kind of rubbery feel to it. Then I just pat it dry. To protect the object being formed from the moisture, I simply wrap the object in some saran wrap. As you're wrapping it, it's important to make sure that the saran wrap doesn't get in the way of any of the details of the maker knife because you want the leather to show as much detail as possible. Alright, the first technique I'm going to show you is simply doing it by hand. It's definitely the cheapest way to do it, but it's also the most labor intensive. But I've had really good luck with it, so let me show you how we do it. For this process, we're going to need a scrap piece of plywood and a staple gun. I start by just pressing the leather over the maker knife to get the rough shape. Then, to hold the leather from shifting around too much, I use the staple gun to add some staples around the perimeter of the knife. And from there, you just continue to press the leather around the shape of the knife, continuing to form the leather. Don't be discouraged if it doesn't seem to be taking shape right away. From my experience, as the leather dries, it starts to take the shape and definition more and more. I just continue to work the leather for a minute or so, every 15 to 30 minutes, for about two hours. After about 24 hours, the leather will be dry and you can remove the staples and you have yourself a wet formed custom piece of leather. Alright, the next process I'm going to show you is the foam technique, which I love. It is super simple and it works really, really great on shallow wet forming like this. Let me show you. For this process, you're going to need two scrap pieces of plywood, a bunch of clamps, and some polyethylene foam, which I have a link for in the description. I start by placing the maker knife close to one side, with the top portion not being formed, hanging off the front. Then I position the piece of leather over the knife and sandwich both between the foam and the top piece of wood. Next, I start by putting a clamp directly on each side of the maker knife. As you can see, in this case the left side had a really tight fit up against the knife, but the right side didn't. So I placed something flat with soft edges up against the side of the leather and the knife and reclamped it. Then I just added as many clamps as I could to get equal pressure across the whole thing. I then simply kept it clamped overnight while the leather dried, and the next day you have another wet formed piece of leather. As I said earlier, this process is super simple and you get really great results. Alright, the last process I'm going to show you is the vacuum seal technique. It requires the most equipment, but is super effective and super easy. Let me show you. For this process, you're going to need a vacuum bag sealing kit. It doesn't have to be anything too specific. I just got an inexpensive kit off of Amazon that came with a bunch of bags and a pump. All you do is you place a small board and the knife in the bag, and then position the leather on top of the knife. Then you seal the bag and attach the pump to the port, and then start sucking out the air. As you remove more and more air, you'll see the leather start to conform around the knife. I like to kind of push the leather around the knife as I go to make sure it conforms the way I want. Once all the air is out, you can remove the pump and set the piece aside to dry overnight. Once it's dried, the leather is perfectly formed around the knife and you're good to go. Alright, there you go, three easy ways of wet forming leather. Now let's take a look at each of them side by side and compare the results and then pick one to make a holster out of. Let's go. From left to right we have the hand formed, then the foam formed, and then finally the vacuum formed leather. The hand form probably has the smoothest look with soft edges and probably has the best form at the tip. The foam form has great definition, but if you look close it does have the texture of the foam imprinted on it as well. Keep in mind that the foam process works really well on shallow forming like this, but doesn't do so well on larger objects. Finally, we have the vacuum formed piece, which came out really well. Compared to the hand formed piece, it has harder looking edges, which gives it a much more rugged look in my opinion. All three would totally work, but I decided to make the holster out of the vacuum formed version. This is going to be a super simple belt loop holster, so I'm not going to take you through it step by step. But if you want a more in-depth how-to video, I'll leave a link above to a video I made a while back where I made a much more elaborate holster for a maker knife. As I make this holster, I want to give a big shout out to my crew of patrons over on Patreon that make these videos possible. They are an amazing group of super supportive people who I can't thank enough. 
And if you're interested in supporting my content too, while also getting some great rewards at the same time, please consider joining my Unnecessary Leather League of Supporters over on Patreon. I've left a link in the description if you're interested and able to support my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe and bell button. I also post a lot of behind the scenes and smaller scale projects as Ethan Carter Designs on Instagram and would love to have you follow me there as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.